My name is Julie Price. I am the manager of sustainability for UAB. I came to UAB for graduate school and when I graduated I was just in the right place at the right time when they decided to start a sustainability program here. Having these little kind of street legal golf carts that are powered off solar, it's a lot more, it's a cost savings, they don't cost as much as a regular car, zero emissions, they can park in um, a lot smaller spaces, so it's just an efficiency. These are part of the facilities fleet and the way that we share vehicles um, so that not everybody has their own, you know, gas powered car. We instead have these few electric vehicles for the most part that are charged off solar panels, so they're actually zero emissions. Um, and you just check them out on an as-needed basis and it works really well for us. It, it definitely meets our needs, lowers our impact, plus they're easier to park. They're so tiny, you can park them anywhere. Almost 26, come on! I'm flooring it right now. There's football ops, we're exploring solar panels for that building because it's a huge south-facing roof. It'd be a great opportunity for solar. And then we have these vehicle charging stations down here. We support electric vehicle charging because the transportation sector is the number one you know, source of climate change pollutants right now. So if we electrify, electrify the transportation grid, we can start to source that power from a lot of other sources, um, solar, wind, still natural gas or coal. So here are our four charging stations. So you have to use like your app. Um, you have to have the charge point app and you just roll up to it and hold your phone up there and then it unlocks one of the ports and you just plug it into your car and it charges whatever credit card you have in the app. I think it's a dollar an hour and then after four hours when your car should be fully charged, depending on how low the battery is, it ups the price which encourages people to move their vehicles and free it up for someone else. So there is a standard definition of sustainability that the United Nations put forth in the 80s, meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. So what that means is um, we all have meat to eat if we want it, a car to drive, access to education and jobs, air conditioning in our houses, pretty good quality of life, and we want that to continue for future generations. Sometimes I feel like my job is to go around, I have sort of a standard roadshow that's like, this is what sustainability means, this is what UAB is doing, this is what we could be doing. And so I feel like it's my job to share all of this horrible information with people, you know, about what could be if we don't, if the combination of global overpopulation and consumption and what it could mean. I have nightmares about my kids, like digging in a landfill and finding the plastic clamshell that I ate my salad out of in the year 2005, and I had like, you know, 15 of those in one week or whatever. So I think about every time I choose, a, a, and when I make a better decision, it benefits the future for sure. Hi, I'm Melissa Kendrick, and I own Sojourns, a fair trade store, and we're at on 3rd Avenue North between 20th and Arrington, just a couple of doors down from Reed Books. So we are Birmingham's first and only wholly fair trade store. Fair trade is the opposite of sweatshops. It is paying people a fair and living wage, being protecting of the environment, and being respectful of their culture. So it's about giving the poorest people and the most marginalized people of the world economic opportunity over and control over their lives. Paying them a fair wage to make a product in a decent working environment with sustainable products. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not rocket science. It's nothing, you know, way out there. It's just the basic idea of treating the artisan with dignity and paying them for their work such amazing detail work. I cannot imagine carving something like this. I mean that arm is so skinny I would break it off and then I would be like you know right at the end and break it apart and I but yeah the sound of wood that's a very common piece that you'll see about Mozambique but all of this is sandalwood that has been carved outside of Maputo. Seeing the impact that fair trade has on the lives of people who are, are gracious and giving and just want an opportunity is 
probably one of the most amazing things that I've ever had the experience of in my life. So my name is Doug Balas. I am a professor in the Department of Art and Art History at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, I'm a, an artist that deals with themes of identity, memory, and visual ecology. So this is like a, there's a whole piece in here and um, it's one of the portraits that's going to my next show and so like I'll make paper and this is actually going to be the spinal column and so this is all paper that's made from the dye garden. Sustainability is weird because if you think about it in this context, like have you guys ever seen like a movie where the person goes back in time and they warn him, like whatever you do, don't do anything that's going to cha change the course of the future. Well, all the time we do sustainability things that are horrible for the environment and we don't realize how much it's adding up to affect the future. And it, if you're just not indifferent to it and do little things, it will actually make a huge positive change. And even just having a conversation about it is important. I define sustainability in the context of my own work through memory and identity, and I use this idea that's basically related to creative placemaking, so I live very near Ruffner Mountain, so even though I don't gather that much materials from Ruffner Mountain, all the war stuff in my work, like the paper I make, the dyes I make, it's all things that I've gathered within 10 miles of my house basically are um, gathered from people's gardens who, and I don't use anything living. So it's all dead things that I make into paper and dyes. And, and in the UAB garden, we grow our own things to make paper, dyes, and inks out of. I think sustainability is important in um, education and I use it a great bit amount in my own work and my own uh, research practice. Um, but for students, since Alabama has, like, it, we're the fourth or fifth um, like most biodiverse um, state in the United States, it's important that they realize that, you know, even though we are a remarkably biodiverse state, we also have a huge number of endangered and threatened um, animals and plants. So they get to explore that through sustainability practices. It's my little piece of what I can do to affect the world. Is it bringing global peace? Is it stopping famine? No. What could be if we don't, if the combination of global overpopulation and consumption and what it could mean for like my kids, right? They're six and four. What is their life gonna be like when they're 80 years old? That's a long time from now. And if you look back 80 years, life was really different.